it was very difficult for me trying to manage my creativity and my business sense at the same time. You know, so um, I wouldn't say that I had it all together. I know that at some point I started to get an accountant in who would come in to do my books every week. At some point, I would spend my cash from the proceeds of the business. I needed things at home I would take from there. So my, my accountant started to tell me, no, you can't do this, you can't do this. Put yourself on an allowance, pay yourself a salary. Everything you earn should be banked. You know, let the business be the business. Let your personal needs come under your salary or your business allowance. So that was like the beginning of my understanding of running a proper business and running a structured business, you know. I slowly started to learn a lot of things from my association with, you know, people like that who would come in and tell me no. And then I also started to see some other people, you know, not necessarily my contemporaries, but maybe older friends who were running proper businesses who had structures in place and you know I always thought to myself you know I need to kind of put this sort of structures in place so I actually learned as I went along it was a very big struggle for me because you know I say that creative people are just creative people it is difficult for creative people to understand the rudiments of business because they, they almost don't go together creativity is is focused on you know I want to get the best design. I want to blow somebody's mind. I don't care how long it takes me or how much it costs me. I just want this cake to come out like amazing. But the business is saying, no, how much are you spending on this? How much time are you using? So it, it was difficult to create that balance. It was difficult to create that balance. But over time, I started to learn and understand how to run a commercial concern. difficult when I did cakes because running a business that is focused around you as a person it's already a challenge on its own so in so many ways as successful as I was with cakes by Tosan mm. I still think that that was a pitfall I felt that you know that was a, a wrong direction because Kicks by Tosan was about me, Tosan. And I was the fire in the business. People would sometimes would say, you know, if I'm not doing their cake, they're not ordering a cake. People expect me to be the one talking to them. People expect me taking their orders because they wanted to talk to me. I was part of, you know, <laughs> the extra and the additional, you know, value that came with ordering a cake from from tosa you know so i would do the consultation i would do the cake you know ordering and you know customer service sometimes so all that was a bit overwhelming you know and i wanted to just be in the background but you know because my name was bang in the middle of the value out of the business. It was difficult for me to really take myself out. <sighs> Wrong move. I could never take myself out. And that's, that's why I actually started to burn out very early. And I said to myself, you know, this is not a sustainable business. It was good that I thought about it early because that is another downfall where you see a lot of businesses who are powered by the owners and they forget that there's a phase, there's a cycle that the business allows you to be shining. You will get to a point where you will begin to pull back. And once you start to pull back, if you don't have a structure that will allow the business run on its own, then your business is just going to die. You know, so I was, I was really worried about that because I'd done so much, put, put in so much work. I'd done a lot of hard work and I didn't want to, ju to just die and fizzle out like most businesses I saw. So that was, that was why I started Top Crust. 
that was why I started thinking about you know putting a proper structure in place. So while Kix by Tosa is not running the way it used to run, you know, when I was in the middle of it, it still runs. I still have people who do the cakes. I still have people who take the orders. I, I'm not, I'm hardly ever in the face of the business now. You know, I'm, I'm just acting as the CEO, um, leading, guiding the vision, yeah, and just basically pushing things, you know, from that um, point of view of orchestrating. So um, I think being a creative and being a business-minded, successfully business-minded person, they're like um, crossroads and one really, really has to understand how to manage that. While running Cakes by Tosa, I would say that, you know, there were numerous challenges. I, I like to put the challenges in different boxes. So um, they're, the, they're the Nigerian Factor challenges where your things like infrastructure, uh, you have to run a generator, you have to power a generator 24-7 sometimes. Um, you have logistics issues, you have to deal with the terrain. Those, those are challenges that I wish we didn't have because every entrepreneur would be a much better entrepreneur if they didn't have to think about how to power their generator. They didn't have to think about how much money they're spending on diesel and they could you know, kind of channel that money as working capital into other parts of their business to expand or just to do, invest in new, new terrains. You know, so those are things that I dreaded. They always used to give me headaches and you know, I was always challenged trying to just manage. The frustration was always very high, you know. <laughs> Sometimes you can be working and your generator packs up and, you know, what do you do? You have to either look for a generator to hire or all sorts of stories. But I guess everybody who works in Nigeria, who runs a business in Nigeria, really understands that, so I'm not alone. When it comes to creative work and getting people to kind of flow with you and understand, you know, the thinking and the mindset, you know, that is a major challenge as well because you're, you're thinking in your own bubble and even as you're thinking in your bubble, your thinking is not even fully processed yet. You, you're, you're kind of have hazard in your thoughts and how do you carry people along with you know have hazard thoughts that's a major challenge i always have the challenge you know trying to pass on a message across to my team this is what i want to do and they're looking like me like this man is mad definitely <laughs> oh guy is mad <laughs> I, I could see it in their faces so many times like this guy has lost it it's just Remain small, go naked, walk off a road. <laughs> but I couldn't tell them exactly what I was thinking because I, I knew that I was thinking, but I, I hadn't even finished thinking. I hadn't put it together because even if I put it together, it, it's always eluding me and it's always evolving. So I, I know I want to get to point A and by the time I'm halfway through the journey to point A, I realize that no, I should actually go, be going to point C. And then as I make the turn to go to point C, I see something else that is in point D. I'm like, no, 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 no. Point D is where I want to be. So it's like all over the place. And you know, it just is a challenge trying to work with people when you're spontaneous. So, I managed to do that because I would say that, you know, I had some level of 
good relationship with my workers. I didn't work with them as boss. I worked with them as brother. I worked with them as, you know, friend. So we would kind of have good times together. We'd go out when we're working, we're singing and dancing and, you know, all sorts of things. So that helped them, you know, understand me better. And even when they felt that they didn't understand me, they were, they had some level of empathy and, you know, like for me enough to say, okay, let's be patient to see what's going to come out of this. You know, so that was always a major challenge for me, just trying to express myself and carry my team along. Another challenge I would say that I had was dealing with customers. Mm. So there's this, especially Nigerian customers. So in a lot of ways, Nigerians are fun, we're friendly, we're warm, but sometimes we can be very rude, you know, and a customer is right all the time, customized king. Some customers come just, you know, with a lot of BS, excuse my French, you know, thinking, you know, I'm right all the time and whatever I want to do, you have to do as I want you. If I tell you to jump, it's just a case of how high, you know, so. Sometimes I just, I felt, you know, <laughs> Kind of very condescending attitude you know a customer would bring and i would have to just suck it up and eat humble pie and i didn't like that at all you know um and then you know you, you'd have all sorts of people young old i could even deal with the older ones but you know you have a bridezilla and you know she's giving me attitude and being rude and like Hello. <laughs> so I didn't like that too. So a lot of times I, I would just cringe and bear it because I didn't want to come out as rude and offensive. And um, it kind of used to be a really spoil, it used to be a spoiler for me. So by the time I'm done with that as a whole, I would need to kind of pick my pieces and lick my wounds and go back into my little shell and try and find some solace before I can even begin to be creative again. So there were times where I was in real, real creative mode and I was so busy, I would totally refuse to see customers, even when they wanted to see me because I know what it can do to me. So that combination of trying to see a customer, deal with their needs, baby them, um, pet them, pour the flowers on their head and, you know, just generally serenade them and then going back to work were like a mix that I always found difficult to deal with because it was very draining. If I do a consultation now and I go straight back to work, my my mindset is not ready to work. I need to kind of calm down first. So that combination always used to give me a lot of challenges. And somehow, you know, even though I managed to do it a lot of times, I would always make sure that I, I would break that consultation, unwind a bit, go out or just relax before I go back to work. These were challenges that I faced over time. I'm, I'm just trying to pick out the, the very peculiar ones. Another thing that, you know, was a major challenge for me was my knack for perfection. You know, so that was like really, really a big problem. Not just for me, but also for the people that I worked with. And a lot of times it was like, Ogato san can never be, you can never please him. Um, and I felt that way too. I even felt that way 
about myself because I could never please myself. I would do something I never, I would never say, look, this is, this cake is the cake. You know, I would always think, no, mm, something wrong there. I could have done this better. <clears throat> you know, so that, that used to always be a challenge. And I guess I frustrated a lot of my workers as they frustrated me as well. Because, you know, every time I'm saying, no, 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 no. You can't do that. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. No, no, no. What have you done? No, strip the cake. I'm like, <laughs> but we can't just, no, 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 no. Just start all over again. And I'm like, so that was a major challenge. I always had to kind of be in the middle of anything that I felt I needed to supervise. If I can live with the mistakes, then I would not be in the middle of it. I would go away and let them do it. But if it was anything that I knew that I, I didn't want to leave with the mistakes, I had to be there all the time. Just basically going from step one, okay, do this next. All right, when you finish, do that next. And when you finish, do that next. And sometimes I have been known to get it up to a point, hoping that they would finish it right and I leave them, and then when I come back the next day or later, it's still a complete disaster. I can't count how many cakes I've stripped in my life, as in cakes that were ready to go, done, dusted, we finished it, customer will come maybe tomorrow. I'm like, no, this cake is not going out, sorry. And it used to demoralize my staff a lot. But you know, a lot of my staff who went through, you know, that whole Cakes by Tosan stable, anytime I see them today, they're like, they can't have gone into a better school. And, you know, the lessons they learned, the knowledge that I passed on to them, just that meticulousness and that, you know, knack for perfection, you know, has actually taught them so much in life, you know, and um, I usually am very pleased when I hear that, you know, monster has turned to a prince kind of story. <laughs>
do you really, really want to get to the bottom and finish everything? And that's where I always begin to pull back and say, no, no, it's not going to happen. So what do we need to do? Now, I think that it is important that every business owner understands that their business cycles and you are the star and the new kid on the block today. You will not be the new kid on the block in five years time or in 10 years time. Another newer kid who's better than you will likely come on the block. So it's about understanding how to evolve as a business and just placing yourself, you know, in the right position you know, going with the times. Now, I have managed to understand that, you know, and um, sometimes people think, no, don't do this. You've done this. This is what you've done all your life. Why do you want to retire? So when I decided to retire from active cake making, people thought, you know, why do you want to do that? This is what you're known for. But you know, I understood that if I didn't retire, the glory that I had built over time would have slowly started to drop. When people remember Cakes by Tosa, they remember Cakes by Tosa with the audacious, magnificent, you know, mind-blowing cakes. Now, the truth is that if I didn't do that pullback at the time I did, I would not have been putting all the hours that I always put. And that would have meant my cakes would have started to drop in quality, drop in creativity. Because what gave me the brand, the name was just the, the audacity with which I used to just come up with concepts. And a lot of it, a lot of it was spontaneous. So it was my presence on site and, oh, we're doing this cake. This cake is supposed to be with a black middle and it's supposed to go um, six feet tall and it's supposed to have flowers in the middle and the top. But halfway through, I can say, no, turn the cake upside down, pull it apart, put this one, put this one, and that's always what I used to do. And that, that was like my master stroke. So, that was what sold me. Now, if I was saying I was going to do that as effectively when I was after 50, then I think I would be kidding myself. So I understood that when I got to that 50 years, even if I had the strength, I didn't want to do it anymore. There were days where I wanted to just sit at home and do nothing where I just wanted to spend time with the family, which I never really did when I was, you know, running my business full time. There were many times I would sleep in the office, sleep in the factory. That was like, you know, <laughs> a constant. So being able to understand your business, understand you as a person and the evolution you're going through in life, you need to be able to translate that into your business and know when to stop, when to start again, when to, you know, evolve into something else, when to do nothing. So that, 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 that whole understanding is something that every business owner needs to be able to capture in running their business. And I think I, I have successfully done that. So this, this years of my business, I always say are the legacy years of my business and actually of my life so i want to spend more time training i want to spend more time giving back in whatever way i can you know and i'm enjoying that so much now you know so um i think that every every entrepreneur just needs to understand the phases of their business and while you're you have the accolades you need to be thinking about what's going to happen when the accolades begin to drop because they will drop.